Hello wonderful people of the internet, welcome back to Panda Creates Tutorials. I'm Panda and I am refilming this tutorial. Uh, it was originally a live in Aussie Tumblr Makers and Crafters, but anybody who watched me live knows what an absolute shit storm that live was. Um, I had so many internet connection issues uh, that night. Um, we ended up having to try to go live a total of four times so what should have taken 20 minutes maybe half an hour actually took over 90 minutes and it was just an absolute disaster so we've decided I had a chat to admins admins agreed um, wasn't my best work obviously not my fault um, I can't help internet connection issues um, but it was just an absolute shambles so that has been removed from the group and in its place we well we I we are refilming this from the very beginning so the UV bubble method is basically you are creating like it's almost like a crocodile skin or a dragon skin look um, using UV resin um, it's usually done, I'm going to show you, we're going to do a coaster first and then, sorry, we keep going in and out of focus. We're going to do a coaster first. I'm going to show you one way, which is putting the UV bubbles over vinyl. This is just a peach to gold opal. Um, putting it over vinyl on a coaster and then the second part of the tutorial we're going to do it on a stemless glass that has been based black so it's the same method done two different ways uh, just to give you a little bit of variety so I am starting with a ceramic square this square just came I get mine from Bunnings um, in like I buy 10 to 20 at a time and just do them up um, and sell them as individual coasters rather than a set they are ceramic tiles so you do need to buy the self-adhesive foam backing that I'm going to be putting on the end but we will get to that we start with just the tile now I have this vinyl I cannot remember where I bought this vinyl uh, but Techwrap Craft Australia does sell uh, opal vinyl they have one very similar to this they also have no I have no idea where it's gone hang on this one this is a blue to green shift as well this is what we're going to do on the coaster but obviously in a different color but that is the UV bubble look okay so they do have the opals on their website I will leave all of their details down in the description this is not one of theirs I have had this one for quite a while now and I honestly can't remember where I bought it um, so we're going to give uh, TechRap a shout out instead because I know they definitely have it and it's in stock. So you want to start by cutting, obviously being a square, I've cut a square, but you can cut it any shape that you like to get the same effect. And we're just going to place it. I don't want it to go right to the edge on this side because then it's not going to be right on the other side. And I forgot my little squidgy tool again. So we're going to use this wonderful silicon stirring stick that I was using last night. I'm going to push that on like that. Not the straightest job in the world, but it will get us by. Now we want to get our scissors because we don't want any overhang. Um, overhang means that it's not going to seal properly. Um, and obviously that can create all kinds of problems so I'm just going to trim it looks like it was just that one spot that worked out well okay so we have our final tile get rid of our rubbish now this craft is best done because oh no we do have overhang um, because it is using UV resin the way that it is done, um, you have to, you're about to see me do this as soon as I'm finished I'm trying to cut this little bit. Um, it's best done at night time or in an area where you have next to no natural light. Uh, simply because you've got to put the UV resin on the project first then get your bubbles ready and then come back to the UV resin. Now if I was to do this in the daytime my workspace is right next to a window. Uh, by the time I came back to try and put my bubbles on my project to get the bubble effect uh, it will have started to cure. 
So just a little disclaimer. Um, maybe do it at night time or away from windows and stuff like that. Uh, because obviously being UV resin, um, any contact with UV light of any kind is going to start its setting. Okay. So... I'm just going to put my little safety disclaimer in. Uh, usually I save my safety disclaimer for when we're working with um, like resin for tumblers and coasters and stuff like that. Technically speaking, UV resin is still a resin, so we're going to sneak that in now and then I'll be back. Hi guys, a quick safety disclaimer for when working with resin. Please make sure you always protect yourself by wearing eye goggles or other protective eyewear. A half face respirator mask with interchangeable filters. I got mine from Bunnings and they also sell the replacement filters. And of course, gloves. Now I prefer to work with nitrile gloves, but in a pinch, vinyl gloves will also work. These are the two types that will not tear easily when working with resin. Please make sure you stay safe while you're having fun and happy creating. Okay, now that that's out of the way, right? This is the UV resin that I use, the one that's got the green plant looking florally label on it. Uh, I get mine wherever I can find it the cheapest. Uh, sometimes it is from small businesses if they have it on special. A lot of the time it's on uh, off eBay just because um, I buy the 200 gram bottles at a time um, and I, I need it to be cost effective so that I can keep my pricing uh, at a reasonable price um, so I will leave the uh, link down in the description for the UV resin um, but yeah generally speaking don't, I don't I know that wish and places like that sell it I don't buy off wish I need my stuff yesterday um, so I try to buy in Australia where I can All right. so we're going to apply UV resin reasonably thick we don't want it super super thick but we don't want it really thin either we want to give the bubbles something to sit in so that when it starts curing uh, the way that you get the bubble effect is that the resin actually comes up the sides of the bubbles um, and cures in that pattern and then when you wipe all of the bubbles and the water away you're left with just the pattern from the UV resin so make sure we're going all the way to the corners. And this is just the first step, guys. You're going to see the whole process in this tutorial. Um, obviously, once you've got your bubble effect and everything, you want to dome it off like you would normally uh, do coasters uh, with a food safe resin. So now that our UV resin is on the coaster, and this is what I meant by working at night time, guys, we're going to move that out of the way just for now. I'm going to get... I was saying this last night when I went live as well. I just don't have enough space to do this tutorial. Okay. Moving stuff around... Moving that back and up a little bit. Okay, it's just a container. Uh, I am using the Super Strength dishwashing liquid from Coles. You can use any dishwashing liquid or uh, hand soap works as well. I just prefer to use dishwashing liquid. We're going to add water to my container. It helps to open the bottle. Put in a reasonable amount because we want some really serious bubbles. And then just mixing it in just a little bit. Just so it's not all sitting on the bottom. Okay, now using a straw, you can use any straw you like. I like using these excuse me these stainless steel ones from Coles simply because it bends at the top and I don't have to be like right over when I'm blowing the bubbles okay I'm going to turn that 
this way. And basically all I'm going to do is use my straw to blow bubbles into my dishwashing liquid water um, combination. And then once I got the bubbles going, we're going to pick the bubbles up and we're going to put them on the coaster. Okay. So like I said, it's really hard to fit it all in frame. I want you to say this bit though. So you'll hear me because my microphone's right here. You'll hear me blowing the bubbles and then you'll see me lift them onto here. But we do have to work quite quickly because obviously bubbles pop. And I learnt last night that my light also pops them a lot quicker. So we're going to turn that off. Okay, are we ready? <laughs> I'm just going to lift that up. Bubbles! Okay. So we want to get our bubbles. And we want to put them. All over where the resin is. Okay. Now it doesn't matter if you get a little bit of water on the resin. Please don't panic. Um, that all wipes off at the end. We've got some big bubbles and some little bubbles happening here. Making sure we're going all the way to the sides. Okay. Then you get your UV lamp. Please make sure... Oh no, my phone's on it. Come play with us. And we're going to put the UV lamp straight over the coaster like that. Now, when working with UV resin, in my experience, the first time that I got um, my first lamp that I got, it was a 36 watt lamp. Uh, no matter how long I left my projects under the light, it was always, always tacky afterwards. If it is tacky, it means your light is simply not strong enough. Uh, I got this one off eBay. I think it cost me maybe $30 or $40. It is a 48 watt. And since swapping to a 48 watt, I have not had any issues since. Uh, I have learnt since swapping that anything under a 42 watt just isn't powerful enough. So please, if you are just getting into uh, UV resin um, and you haven't bought a lamp yet or... You do have a lamp that's under 42 watts and you find that you have the same problem where it's tacky all the time. Uh, just jump onto eBay or a beauty supply place or anywhere like that and just upgrade your lamp to a stronger one. Uh, so we're just going to hit this. This is on its second minute now. I'm just hitting the 60 second button. But you can see our bubbles are starting to pop under the light. So I'm going to do this for, it's got 38 seconds to go. So once this cycle's finished, I'm going to hit it for another two minutes. So another two 60 second cycles. And then once that four minutes is done, I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, so that's been curing for four minutes now. You can see we still have some little bubbles. Right, but the majority of them have popped. So I'm just going to get some paper towel. As you can see, it still had water and bubbles on it, but the UV resin has cured. So if I peel that off, we have our coaster. Ta -da! Now, this is all 100%. I'm going to turn that on. 100% personal preference. Okay. All these teeny tiny little bubble patterns around the outside and the smaller bubbles, they're my favorite. Uh, these are okay. Anything bigger than like bubbles like this is not my jam. Okay. If you like really super big bubbles like this one here, right? that's your thing. It is personal preference, but please keep in mind that different bubble sizes are obviously going to create a different effect and I just really like how the small to medium bubbles look when they're all together. So now that that is done, it is cured. Uh, we do have one tiny little bit that's sticking up. Where did it go? Just here. Right, so I'm just going to get my sandpaper and run my sandpaper over that little spike. But we haven't done too badly. 
Uh, on the cup, because the cup is a curved surface and we put a little bit more uh, resin on the cup, you are going to see more spikes. So I will go through the sanding process a little bit more when we do our glass. But that is our UV coaster. Now from this step, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and add uh, mica powders or anything over the top, especially if your bottom wasn't an opal vinyl, it was just a coloured vinyl, you can go ahead and add anything you want to this step now. I'm going to leave it like this because I love that vinyl, which means it is ready for the next step, which is its top coat. Alrighty, so to finish off the coaster, we're just going to put a coat of resin over the top. Hopefully one will be enough. If it's not, I will come back and explain the next steps. But just in brief, if you put a coat of resin over the, the UV bubble method, uh, after you've sanded back all of the spiky little bits, um, obviously you want to keep the texture, but sometimes you get, and I didn't get it on the glass, I was kind of sort of hoping. Um, to get some on the glass, but I had some good luck this time, but sometimes you get They're like raised bits of cured resin that are quite sharp. They look like little icicles poking up uh, If you get any of them, we have a tiny one on here. You just sand it back wipe it down uh, with a little bit of alcohol um, And then you're ready for the next step So we're gonna put a coat of resin on this if it is too thin and I like it's not smooth I can still feel the texture I'll come back and do another coat but usually on coasters and cheese boards and stuff I only need the one coat now I am using a diamond coat from just resin it is a one-to-one -one ratio resin and as always I am wearing my gloves um, you should be wearing a mask um, but if you've I mean you've seen my mask in the disclaimer if I was to wear that and try to do a tutorial you wouldn't be able to understand a word that I say um, so while I'm filming, I don't wear a mask, but any other time I am masked up and gloved up And you should do the same So I've just poured the resin on and I'm just smoothing it out all over I'm using my doming mat from LBB resin. I will leave the link for it down in the description uh, It is a game-changer doming mats um, If you do coasters and stuff like that and you already own a doming mat, let me know in the comments uh, but to me it was a real game changer I used to have my projects sitting um, under like little medicine cups um, and then I just let it drip down onto baking paper using a doming mat makes life just so much easier okay so I'm going to add a little bit more now that it's all smoothed out I'm going to go right up and over the edges Make sure that that vinyl, especially, is really well sealed in. We don't want any water or anything when they go to wash it coming up underneath. Now Diamond Coat is a um, self-leveling food safe resin. So I will go and put it over on my curing table because this table tilts this way ever so slightly. Um, so you want to make sure, especially on flat surfaces, you want to make sure that you have it on a flat even surface. Okay, so that is that done. And I will let that cure now. So I'm going to go and move this over. And I have a little bit of resin left, so I'm going to finish filming by doing the glass. Okay guys, so onto the glass. Move it this way just a little bit and turn the light on. There we go. Okay, I have, this is just a stemless glass, uh, I have spray painted it, why does that keep moving in and out of frame? Stay boo boo, stay. Okay, um, I have 
base sprayed that black. Uh, I used uh, Australian Export in the matte black from Super Cheap Auto. As always, everything that I use will be down in the description if you'd like to check it out with links. Um, I try to support Australian small business as much as I can and I try to get all of my supplies that I use in my tutorials in small, of, like from smaller businesses. Uh, sometimes it's just a little bit unavoidable like for instance when I use super cheap spray paint. Uh, obviously super cheap have stores nationwide and are a chain. And can you sit like that just, I don't know if my camera's moving or if my, obviously my table's not moving. I mean I know it's got legs but I don't think it's going to walk anywhere. But see how it just, that's so weird. It just wants to keep floating in and out of frame. See, now it's going to go down. How strange. Oh, anyway, okay, so. Same deal as what we did with the coasters, guys, except for this one, I want it on a black base because I'm going to be using a chameleon uh, mica powder over the top. Uh, what I need to do before we go any further though is put some backing paper down. There we go. In case I make a mess. But it's exactly the same process as what we did and we're going to apply it exactly the same way as you would apply normal resin except we're going to squeeze it straight from the bottle. There is no pre-mixing required. But the application is the same way as what you would put uh, normal tumbler epoxy on a tumbler. Now, before everybody goes and has a fit about the fact that I am using UV resin on a cup, no, UV resin is definitely not food safe. It should never, ever be used as a top coat for anything that may come in contact with the mouth, the eyes, the nose, anything like that. Um, ears, like UV earrings, that's fine. Um, but uh, me personally, I wouldn't ever wear a UV nose ring. Um, just try, try and keep it away from your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth. Not so much your ears, your mouth. Um, but we are going, and you'll, you will see this in the tutorial, uh, we are going to put a final coat of food safe resin over the top okay so because it's going to be fully covered you can see I've taped my glass off as I always do at the top here um, and when I put the final coat of food safe resin on I will have my tape up um, maybe not even a quarter of an inch just to give me a really good seal and so that none of this UV resin is exposed in any way. It's going to be fully encased in food safe resin. Okay, so please never ever, ever, ever use UV resin as your final coat. That is a very big no-no. But doing this, because we're going to coat it with resin, it's perfectly safe. Okay, so I've just made sure that I have a decent coat of UV resin on there like that and again I'm going to make my bubbles and put them on okay I have no lung capacity no lung capacity at all okay so let's get some fun is going. And again, you have to work fast. Oh, no, wait. You know what I'm going to do is turn my light off. Because I have learned that my light and bubbles are not friends. They don't pop nearly as fast <laughs> when the light's not on. Okay, so as you can see, I am using lots and lots of the little bubbles because I just love the look of the little bubbles. I'm also not covering the base with bubbles. I did cover the base, like the butt of the cup, with UV resin because we want it to all be level. So that's all being done, but I'm not actually putting any bubbles over the base. Okay, so now that that is done, 
we're going to do like we did with the coaster and set the UV light over it while it spins. Okay, so the cup. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, my bigger bubbles popped. Okay, hang on. Lucky I checked that to show you guys. Hey, that would have been a bit depressing otherwise. I'm just going to spread all these little ones out instead. That's hard. Okay, so again, we're going to do four minutes with that over there like that. And then I will be back. Okay, so that has cured for four 60 second cycles now, so four minutes. Just going to get the paper towel. Just going to blotch off any excess water or bubbles that might still be on the cup. Didn't really work in one spot, like where all the bubbles popped at the very beginning. Uh, I do think that the resin was too far cured when I tried to fix it. Uh, it only takes a, two, a couple of seconds um, of UV light before it starts to cure. But that is what we're left with. Now, I'm going to leave this part as it is because I'm going to put a picture um, or a decal or something there. Um, but if you weren't happy or if you found that you had a lot of spots... Uh, or you didn't really like how it looked, uh, you can go through and do the exact same process as what we just did straight over the top of what you've already done. And you can keep doing that until you get the look that you like. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing it more than three times. Uh, I've never had to do it more than twice. If I didn't like how it looked the first time, I had another go at it, and by the second time, I, I was good to go. Okay, uh, simply because you don't want too many layers um, because then it starts to get really, really heavy. Okay, but that is what we're left with. What we're going to do now is switch this off um, and take it off the turner, and then I will be back to show you uh, how to apply the mica powder. Alrighty, so here she is off the turner. And if you haven't noticed by now, guys, uh, welcome if it's your first time here. Hello, I'm Panda. If you've been watching me for a while, you may have noticed that all of my projects are female. That's nothing against ma males. I don't hate men. They just, it, it's, I, I think it has a lot to do with my dad because every car, boat, caravan, etc. that we ever owned when I was a kid was always a female as well. So I think <laughs> now they're just, it's, they're all she's, okay? I am assuming my project's gender, yes, but they are all female. Um, yeah, maybe just because they're so pretty. They're too pretty. Although, I've got two boys, and I have to say, with their long lashes and their blue eyes, I've got very pretty boys, too. Um, okay, so, it's on a black base, obviously. What I want to do, and I probably shouldn't have taken... What I'm going to do... Firstly, I stick that on there like that so I don't knock it over and break the bloody glass. But... The mica powder I am using is, if you can see, it goes, it's sort of like the coaster that we're doing, but not quite. Right? It goes, it's got a gold to like plum burgundy maroni shift. Purple to gold. Okay, purple to gold. It is, if you turn that off, please focus. The Dragon Scales, there we go. Dragon Scales from Pixie Dust Pigments. I will leave the link for this down in the description. I also have uh, Indi Indigo, is it Indigo Dreams? I have the other one that she had as well, uh, which is a uh, greeny blue to purple shift, and that's amazing as well. But we're going to use the Dragon Scales tonight. It is a chrome mica powder, so if you were see if I can get it see that in the lid 
right? It has a chrome to it, so it has a color shift. It is a, a color shift chameleon, but it also has a chrome effect to it as well. So if we hadn't done this on the glass or if you're doing a tumbler or whatever you're doing, um, doing the tacket method, if you were to put down tacket, then use this and then burnish it off, it has a really slick, sexy chrome effect to it. It's gorgeous. So I definitely recommend getting your hands on some chrome chameleons um, and trying it with the tacket method. Uh, we're not doing that tonight. We are simply going to paint this straight over the top. And you will notice that I took my tape off as well. go a long way and we'll see if I can get it to shift on camera okay so there's the purple and then if we come back the other way so at the top we've got the gold going Right, so it does have a color shift once we get this under epoxy or we have the whole cup done so it's not just this one bit you'll be able to see it a lot better okay but I'm gonna go ahead now and speed this next bit up and then I'll be back once it's all covered Da, da, da. there it is okay now watch the bottom of the cup okay see how it has that mirror chrome finish to it right that's what we mean by the chrome effect okay catches the light too much there but you can see right there's the purple and then it goes into gold okay it's got this gorgeous color shift, but it's also got that really, really pretty mirror effect to it. Uh, now, I am down the track. I'm just waiting on some supplies to come in. Um, but I am going to do a tutorial where it shows the three different kinds of chameleons. So you have chameleons. Um, uh, there is another word. Interference micas, right? Um, can also be known as chameleons. They're your white chameleons that when you put them over a black base, the color shows up, okay? Then you have your normal chameleons like pixie dust pigments, uh, unicorn farts, which is one color that shifts to another color, all right? And then you have chrome chameleons, which is like this, which is where it's still, like you can see the shift, um, whether it goes on a black base or a white base, you can still see the shift between the colors, but it has that mirror effect to it as well. And a little bit of this stuff goes a very long way. Um, to be honest, chrome chameleons or mirror chameleons, they can also be known as, are my favorite out of the three. Uh, just the color and the coverage and the effects that you can get from this. Just amazing. Um... But definitely check out, I'll leave the links for the um, Pixie Dust Pigments other ones as well. Uh, she does have all three kinds, or well, she did have. Um, I own all three kinds from her anyway. Uh, you've got the uh, range like, uh, what's it called? The Tuscan Sun is one of my favorites. That's an interference where it's white. Uh, and the color comes up on a black base. I have the two that she got in. It's M Unicorn Farts and is it Mermaid Kisses? Whatever the other one is. Um, and then she's got these two, this one and another one like this as well. So I'll leave the links for all of those down in the description if you were interested in checking them out. But I am gonna do a tutorial very soon uh, where I demonstrate all three. Um, for no other reason than I thought you guys might be interested in the different types. 
But now that that is done, um, obviously it's late at night for me, so it's not happening tonight. Um, but tomorrow I will give her a couple of coats of spray seal. I used Rust-Oleum two times in the clear. Uh, I prefer satin, but uh, when I can't get satin, I will use gloss. I'm using gloss at the moment. Um, so I will give that a couple of coats of spray seal, and then we will be back for the next step. Okay, so here is our glass that we were working on. She has had her two coats of spray seal. And we are ready to put the final coat of resin on. Now I am using diamond coats, just resin, uh, just resin's diamond coat, sorry. Um, it is a food safe resin. I'm just going to move my microphone a little bit closer. Um, and I've also retaped off. Now, if you can see, I have left a space between where the tape is and where the glass is. This is the seal that I was telling you about. Um, I also decided against putting something on the glass. We're just going to leave it as is. Okay, so the first coat we want to do, you don't want to make it too thick um, because then it's going to fill in your texture, right? All of your texture from your bubbles. So if it does take more than one coat to build up a nice smooth uh, finish, then so be it. Okay, but you don't want to do too much with the first coat. You just want to seal it in, make it all shiny and glossy and pretty, and hope that it is the only coat that you need. Okay, so you can still see the texture under the resin. I'm not putting it on like you would a normal final coat where it's really super thick. Like so. Make sure we don't forget the back. It's exactly like doing a um, finishing coat or a final coat on a normal tumbler or a glass. You just don't want to put it on so thick. Okay, we want to still be able to see that texture from underneath. But that's that done. Once it focuses again, it wants to, or bad, badly it wants to. There we go. Okay, and you can also see the color shift between the purple and the gold as it comes around as well. Now, I do have some bubbles. So, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of them now. is oh see it's moving again isn't that weird that still confuses me how it can travel like that well well it wants to there we go but that is our uv bubble glass that's now finished as well so they're all ready to go this tutorial after the live being such a fail is finally finished if you have any questions please leave them in the comments otherwise thanks so much again for watching guys and i will see you next time Bye.